Hey guys, it's Donna. Headphones have to stay on because I'm monitoring audio. And this is like the 10,000th time that I've recorded this. So I haven't done a talking to you directly video in forever. So this video probably will flop, but that's okay because this is for anyone who is a dedicated viewer of this channel and really any person who wants to make content similar to me. The essentially how I make my videos video, but also simultaneously taking you on the journey of how I made the BuzzFeed video, the latest one I just upload, from the writing to filming to editing. So first question from Instagram comes from Josh Essex, who did the voiceover for the Ben Smith segment of the video. And he asked, how did you first get the idea for this video? How did you track down the interviewees? Well, that's a two-part question, so I'm going to answer your first question about how I got the idea first. I know that a lot of people struggle with writer's block, but getting an idea for me has never been a struggle. And I think I am this way because whenever there is something that inspires me or not even inspires, but triggers this sort of curiosity in me, I'm writing it down. Everywhere I go, I keep a small memo book with me just in case there is something that triggers this curiosity in me, if you will. And I could do this on my phone, but I think there's just something about doing it analog that makes me want to write things down even more. I write down anything. It doesn't even have to lead to making an actual video. It can be a cool editing trick from a movie I just watched, a quote from a book I'm reading, something someone said in a podcast, or a random conversation I just overheard. So essentially the things in this memo book aren't necessarily video ideas. They're an assortment of things or thoughts I just find interesting. If I happen to be inspired by something that I want to make an actual video about, that goes on a list on my phone. And let me tell you right now, it's a very long list. How do I choose what to make a video about? Pick me. Choose me. Well, I'm unfortunately one of those people who are extremely driven by inspiration. And I say unfortunately because these days in the creator slash art world, that type of mentality is not the most popular. I think what is mostly preached now or the thing that I most see is that what you have to do is just, even if you are not inspired, put your head down, get to work and inspiration will come. It's really difficult to explain, but if you take a look at the ideas that I've written down on my phone, these to me are just ideas that I find interesting. I am not yet motivated to make a video about them. I need some sort of trigger to happen that drives me to actually create a video. Like I've had the word Buzzfeed written on my phone for a very long time, but I've never been inspired to actually make a video about them. I found their rise and fall to be something very interesting to talk about. In my head, I logically say, yeah, it's interesting and I can make a video about them anytime. Then all of a sudden, BuzzFeed News shut down and boom, that was my trigger. My goal here is to get an idea of what the public sentiment is for the thing that I'm inspired by and if there is anything of substance to make a video about. I'm reading articles, watching new segments, watching both old and new videos of people's theories on to why this is happening. I'm not doing a deep dive note taking session, but I'll write down key events where I may want to do a deep dive later. I just want an overall picture of how everything is. Once I get that full picture and decide whether or not the video can be made about this topic, I start developing my own take. For the BuzzFeed video, that was essentially, if you haven't seen it yet, the downfall of the company from unsustainable work conditions for the pay that we're getting, and the distrust from their audience building because of basically grifting. The thesis, of course, is not set in stone. If I find something else that explains BuzzFeed's downfall better, I will go in that direction. I like to start this step with something called a bubble chart which I actually do not know if that's what it's called. All I know is we did this in elementary school and I'm still doing it now. Thesis goes in the middle. Then you have supporting ideas, which I got from the light research phase and subpoints if needed. Each of these bubbles serves as a guide in what I will do deep research on. 
what events I'm taking deep notes on. If it proves or disproves my thesis, I'll work it into the script. If it's just extraneous information, I'll ax it. That all leads me to the next question from Alec, who is actually someone that I interviewed for the BuzzFeed video. He asks, what made you want to make it an hour versus 15 minutes versus 30? I don't really go into any video with a specific time frame in mind. The extent to which I think about time is, do I want to do a deep dive or not? Non-deep dives, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Deep dives, however long that will take. <laughs> Longest has been an hour. And honestly, this video could have been longer, was going to be longer. But it wasn't because I just don't have the confidence yet to make a two-hour video. In this stage, we are taking notes from multiple sources. Interviews, podcasts, and videos in general get timestamped. That way, if someone says something interesting that I can use as a soundbite for the video, I can find it easier. For books and articles, I'm taking notes on paper. From all of this, I create an outline of how I want to structure the script. To begin, to begin, how to start. I have this really annoying thing about me where I want every single word and sentence to be crafted perfectly. So writing takes me forever. I can lock myself in a room alone with nothing but coffee, my laptop, and notes. I even put my phone away in a drawer sometimes. For sure, I am focused and typing. But ultimately, that focus is wasted on writing and rewriting everything because I'm such a stupid perfectionist. So by the time I want to move on and talk about something else, my brain is already fried. I knew for this video I wanted things to change, so I had a plan to bypass all of that. I would peer pressure myself. So for this, I wrote the majority of the script in coffee shops. My logic for that was I wanted to really make myself believe that all these other people around me on their laptops were also doing something important. And me, I don't want to look like a slacker in front of all these important people. I needed it to look like I was doing something important too. I had to look like I was continuously typing. The only way to continuously type is to let go of this perfection and write your ideas down. It worked. I tricked myself into thinking everyone was watching me work. So I just wrote. First key to writing is to write. Granted, what I wrote wasn't great, but that's fine. Next day, I would polish it up, lock myself alone in the room, and go back into that perfection mode to craft everything better. I continued this cycle until the whole script was done. Now, I know I just finished saying that I repeat this cycle until the whole script is done, but phase five actually happens simultaneously with the writing phase which I know is very inefficient, but when my brain is fried from writing and I know I can do more work, I like to switch to a task that needs less brain power. Also, I just get really excited about making videos, so whatever I can do to start, I wanna do it. Pre-production is when I finally start developing the tone. Do I need to rent a space to film this at? Do I need wardrobe, makeup? What gear will I be using? Etc. For this video in particular, I wanted to pay homage to my first video I did about BuzzFeed, which detailed the process of applying with an over-the-top clickbait title, of course, for the views. Of course, guys. This wasn't my first video ever, but that was my first one where I actually felt seen by people outside my small YouTube circle. And even though I kind of regret how I communicated things and the timing of when I uploaded that, that video really had a big impact on me. So it was like, I wanna pay homage to this. I need to, I want to. I started that process by visiting the locations that I had shot this first video at. I don't do this all the time, but if I do have the time for it, I'll often scout the locations and take videos slash photos before actually shooting at the place. I've learned my lesson of just showing up, which I often do. Many times I've gone to the place without checking and it's closed or it's not what it looks like online or there are just way too many people to be even shooting at this place. This building was not here the first time. So that, that's kind of crazy. Once I'm done visiting each location, I create a shot list. I again don't do this all the time, 
but if I do want something specific, this is really important to do. Pre-production is also a time where I gather all the video clips I need. As you can imagine, there are a lot. I do have this whole organization process for it, but I'm going to spare you the boring details. The most important part of this phase is that I keep everything in this external drive. It's definitely on the pricey side, but I use the SanDisk 4TB G Drive SSD. It's small enough to carry around with you, fast enough to edit your projects on. I know there are some cheaper alternatives on the market, but I also have heard so many horror stories about them that I just sticked with this drive. It's never failed me before. So I'm sticking with this one. Since I am in the video essay genre or whatever it is we're calling it now, this phase can be short or super long depending on the video I'm creating. For this BuzzFeed video, we had voiceover, the ma shoot, the interviews, and the b-roll. So it was fairly long this time. To record this, I use the Tascam DR60D Mark II. The sound it produces is pretty decent, but if you are thinking about getting this one for yourself, know that this model is a bit outdated. For the mic, I use the Sennheiser MKH416. It's this mic right here. It was not a cheap mic, but I found with mics, anytime you're hoping to save, the quality of sound you get from a value mic is never great. So I decided to splurge and got the Sennheiser a couple years ago, and I've never had to get another mic since. My goal for the homage shots, the homage scenes, was to convey to longtime viewers the progression of change that has happened to me and this YouTube channel while also establishing that sense of remembering one's origins. So to do that, I wanted to replicate a lot of the shots from this first video I did about BuzzFeed, but not exactly to the T. That first video was shot on a Canon 70D using the Canon EFS 10 to 18 millimeter lens. This newer video was going to be filmed on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro using that same lens. So using our reference shots, we replicate the composition of the first video as best we could. That up in quality, while the composition was pretty much the same, to me represents the goal of the video well. But also, it's subtle enough to not distract new viewers stumbling across this channel for the first time. Camera settings. Even though the camera has the capabilities of shooting 6K, I typically opt in for 4K to save some space. I shoot in log because I hate myself and in 24 FPS. Sorry, not sorry, MKBHD. To date, this is my favorite camera to use. I could go on and on about specs like dynamic range, color science, audio ports, whatever. But overall, this camera is awesome. It's great if you are an independent filmmaker on a tight budget. Oh my God, the cinematography I'm able to get from this thing is not just amazing, but it's actually, it actually inspires me to go out and shoot more stuff. Back to Josh's question of how did I track down the interviewees? I normally don't do interviews for my videos because, you know, it takes a long time and you got to get a video out every month and stuff. So I can't be taking that much time for every single video. But I really wanted to make this one different from all the downfall of BuzzFeed videos. There are tons out there. You know this. So I don't know about you, but I've always felt that the story of that, why I left BuzzFeed era to be incomplete. But the slight bias not even slight, a super, I hate BuzzFeed bias. And rightfully so, you could argue that, yeah, they deserve it. Because I know there is this bias against them, I knew, maybe I, I didn't know, but I felt there was this group of people, this group of employees out there who just didn't feel the same way. And I knew these guys were not likely to speak up because no one in their right mind would come out with a video defending a company. They'd be eaten alive by the internet. What are you talking about? So my goal with the interviews was to find people that left the company on okay terms or were still working there. And this is what made the story challenging to tell. One person was going to say BuzzFeed was toxic. And then there would be this other person who would say, no, it's not. Just like imagine the logistics of creating a story from that, those two points of view. 
And if it wasn't obvious to you already, if the interviewees were saying things that didn't match the script that I had already written, the script would obviously be changed. Is that music? I can't with this. I can't with this. What's going on? Did I cut some things out was another question. I cut a lot out. Other than it being too long, there was this other challenge that I had with the interviews. Was that again? No one wants to defend BuzzFeed. So I had talked to a few people who were not willing to be on camera. I also had people who I thought I was going to get an interview for just end up not doing it. So to sum up this section a little bit faster, I got connected with Alec because he was a mutual. I had seen his videos before and I knew that he was likely open to doing an interview because I saw that he had done a breakdown of BuzzFeed. He connected me to Caleb and for anonymous, obviously can't say for very obvious reasons. I am totally with the sentiment of the best gear to use for starting YouTube is the gear you have. But I am telling you that one of the benefits of having a camera that inspires you, that you're excited about, is that you actually want to shoot more. I really could just use stock footage from Storyblocks to fully explain everything that I'm narrating. And I do for most of the video. I think filming your own b-roll though adds another dimension of your personality to your videos. And my theory is over the next coming years or months even, filming your own stuff is going to be more valuable in the video essay world especially with this rise of AI generated content. Like right now, AI can't film itself and I don't get how that would even be possible. But because of that, it's sourcing existing footage or using mid-journey and it makes all these videos look very similar. So shooting my own b-roll is really time intensive for like one minute of the total running time footage for my videos. But I don't know, to me, it's worth it. Again, it's also a lot of fun when you like the gear that you're using. You know, I could probably do a whole video on editing alone. So again, I will spare you the boring details. There are some videos where I have an editor fully edit and I come in to do a bit of touch-ups at the end. This video, however, I took full control of because it's just one of those projects where I get obsessed with how everything looks and how I want it to look. So I end up doing everything myself. I'm a Final Cut user and I edit on a 2021 16 inch MacBook Pro. I opted in for the M1 Max, 32 gigs of memory and one terabyte of flash storage. As I mentioned before, I do edit on an external drive so it doesn't take up too much space on my laptop. At this stage, I shouldn't be changing the story around, but I always end up doing so. For some reason, some things written in an essay format just doesn't translate well to being on video, so I end up deleting a lot of things um, in the edit or switching the order of segments. Phase eight, optimize for YouTube. Pretty self-explanatory. I do all the YouTube stuff, thumbnails, description, upload, and hope for the best. All right, cool. Finally got this video done after so many people have asked in different ways, obviously. Um, yeah, hope you liked it. That's the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it. Stay psyched. Is that how I end my videos?